Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and today I'm going to be doing a reading wrap up for the first half of 2021. I'm just now getting back into YouTube. I haven't made a video in quite a while so I figured that I could give you all a little update on what I've been reading and what I have read so far. I am a full-time college student so it just makes sense to kind of do them quarterly because I'm not able to consistently read every single day all day long. So this year I made it a goal to kind of branch out from young adult fantasy because prior to now that's all I really ever read that and like dystopian books. So this year I've read a lot of thrillers. The majority of the books that I'm going to tell you about today are thrillers because I've kind of been in this continuous reading slump and the only way that I've been able to read and kind of get out of it is to read standalones that don't take a whole lot of thinking and like processing the information. I just for some reason have not had the mental capacity to take on like a magic system and a fantasy world and all of this stuff so it was just easier to pick up a thriller where every chapter ended in a cliffhanger and I just wanted to keep reading so that's really all I've read so far this year that I'm going to put in this video. When I do my next quarterly wrap up you'll see some variation in the books that I've been reading but just for this one is kind of a thriller wrap up. So I want to preface this with saying that I haven't read a million books. I've been reading my whole life, but I wouldn't necessarily call myself like a bookworm. Like I'm not reading in every second of free time that I have. So my reviews of these books aren't going to be super in depth about the writing style and the author this and the author that. It's literally just my opinion of the book. So the first book that I read this year is Verity by Colleen Hoover. And I know that Colleen Hoover is typically a romance author. I don't think that I've read any of her romances yet, but I really plan to because I liked both of the thrillers that she's written so far. So Verity is a book about a struggling author named Lowen who receives a job proposal by a man named Jeremy who is the husband of a best-selling author named Verity. Prior to this, Verity was in a really bad accident that left her in a catatonic state when she was in the middle of writing her book series. So Lowen is hired to complete the series for her for like a large amount of money. In order to complete said series, Lowen has to go to Verity and Jeremy's home that they currently live in to look through her office that has all of her notes and everything that she needs to be able to write the story. So obviously, Things between Lowen and Jeremy start picking up, even though his wife is upstairs in the bedroom in the same house. But one day, while Lowen is going through notes, she finds a memoir written and incomplete by Verity that provides a lot of detail into Verity's mindset and some of the events that took place before Verity's accident. Things continue on from there and you learn that things aren't always what they seem. I believe that I originally gave this book four stars and it's been so long since I've read it that I can't really remember why but I'm pretty sure it's because some parts of the plot twists or the things that you wouldn't see coming were a little bit obvious and I'm not one to read too far into that kind of thing. I like being surprised, so especially with thrillers, I just read and I form my own theories, but I don't think too much into what else is going on because I want to experience the plot twist. So with saying that, me being able to guess certain things are going to happen means that to everyone else, it's probably very obvious. The next book I read is called Layla, which is also by Colleen Hoover, and this follows a couple named Layla and Leeds who experience a very traumatic event together and while Layla is recovering from this experience she's not really able to go back to normal life. In an effort to kind of cheer her up and maybe reset her brain a little bit, Leeds brings Layla to the 
bed and breakfast that they originally met at that is now being sold. While they're there, Leeds meets another guest named Willow and him and Willow team up to kind of figure out details in Willow's past that she can't remember. And this really puts a strain on him and Layla's relationship. Then at this point, Leeds kind of has to decide who he wants to help, Willow or Layla, because if he doesn't pick, then it's just kind of gonna end badly for everyone. I gave this book five stars because I truly did not see the turn of events coming, so I was actually really surprised by the ending. I thought it was good, and yeah. The next book that I read is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough, and I had the plans to read this before it came out as a series on Netflix, but I finished it before I watched the series on Netflix, and then I watched the, the TV show. So. So this book is about a struggling single mom named Louise who goes out to the bar one night with her best friend to let loose and meets a man named Daniel and sparks fly, there's a connection, they end up kissing and then that's all that happens. And then Louise goes to work on Monday and realizes that her new boss is Daniel and he's there with his wife who he failed to mention previously. A few days later, while she's dropping her son off at school, Louise bumps into Adele, which is David's wife, and a friendship starts budding here. So throughout the book, she is building a friendship with Adele while continuing a relationship with David, and neither of them knows about it. So it's kind of suspicious, but the longer Louise spends with Adele, the more she starts to question David and him and Adele's marriage dynamic. So she kind of starts digging in there to see what's going on. And then there's a plot twist at the end that honest, I would have never even looking at context clues picked up. But if you know, you know. Then I watched the TV series and I really like the TV series a lot because it's able to portray certain aspects of the book that I would have thought. It's like they're more trying to show when ending because they have to find a way to show some of the characters drama without saying it. I don't know how you describe it. But really good book, really good show. You should watch it. You should read it. Five stars. Okay, so the next series of books that I read is not technically a series, but it's all written by the same author, and the author is Riley Sager. I watch Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte, and I often hear her talking about this author when it comes to thrillers. And so when I looked into him, I found out that he was coming out with a fifth book in like July or June of this year, so I decided to read all four of his current books before his new book came out, which I still haven't read yet, but it's fine. So the first book that I read of his was called Lock Every Door. I'm not sure about the publication order of all four of these books, so I don't know which one he wrote. Actually, I think I know which one he wrote first, but I'm not sure. So anyways, Lock Every Door is about a girl named Jules who's broke. She just got out of a relationship and she's looking for a job, so she finds a job at this upscale apartment complex called the Bartholomew and gets a job as an apartment sitter. The only issue is that with being an apartment sitter, there's a lot of rules. You can't have visitors, you can't be gone the entire night, and you're not able to bother or really communicate at all with any of the other guests in the apartments. While she's working there, she meets another apartment sitter named Ingrid, they have a good conversation, they go out, and then the next day Ingrid disappears. When they were talking originally, Ingrid was kind of telling Jules the dark history of the Bartholomew and said some pretty concerning things. So when she disappeared, Jules took it upon herself to try to investigate and figure out what was going on. While doing so, she starts to uncover some very horrific secrets about the Bartholomew and has to figure out what happened to her friend. So I gave this book four stars because the beginning is relatively slow. It takes a long time to kind of get into the action, get into the mystery of everything that's going on. So I gave it four stars personally. Once you hit the climax, it was really good. It was just the build up took, it seemed like it took forever or like half the book to even get somewhere good. So besides that, I have no other complaints. The next Riley Sager book I'm gonna be talking about is The Last Time I Lied, and this is my favorite out of all four. I'm pretty sure this is the first one he ever wrote, so for a lot of people it's not their favorite, but it's mine. So, this book is about a girl named Emma, and when she was eight, 
eight or nine-ish age. She went to a summer camp and was put into a cabin with a bunch of teenage girls. So obviously there was a huge age gap. And one night she watches them leave and they never return and they're never found. So the camp gets shut down and 15 years later Emma is an artist and she paints these giant murals kind of portraying her trauma surrounding the whole incident and the owner of the camp takes notice and asks Emma if she would like to come and be the painting counselor for like the summer camp's last summer open or something. They're reopening for one summer and then closing again forever, I think. So originally Emma's super reluctant. She doesn't want to go because there's a lot of trauma surrounding that place and then she decides to go because she wants some closure and secretly because she wants to figure out what happened to her friends. So when she shows up, she realizes she's kind of being spied on. There's cameras pointed at her cabin and everybody's kind of just paying really close attention to what she's doing. And seriously, history repeats itself and the three girls that are bunking with her disappear. So not only does she have to figure out what happened to the first three girls that went missing, now she has to deal with the new three girls that are missing and figure out what the heck is going on at Camp Nightingale. This one also kind of had a surprising ending, but I feel like it was more of like a peaceful ending. Like, not peaceful because of, you know, certain things, but I felt good with the ending that I got from this story. So I gave it five stars. I, like I said, I really liked this one for some reason and it wasn't even the first one of his that I read. It's just the one that's like resonated with me the most. So the next Riley Sager book I'm gonna be talking about is Final Girls. This book follows Quincy who is a final girl, which means that she survived like a massacre. So years prior, her and five friends went on vacation and she was the only one that survived. She's kind of grouped into a group of final girls, which consists of two other girls that have experienced something similar, and one of them is found dead in her bathtub with suspicious circumstances surrounding her death. So her and the other final girl join together to try to figure out what's going on and what happened to the other girl. I gave this one five stars at the time, but I think I'd give it four now because I predicted the ending that was going to happen, but it was closer to the ending. But I also feel like it was kind of predictable. Like, especially if you paid attention the whole book, it was pretty predictable. So I would give it four now. The last Riley Sager book that I read was called Home Before Dark, and this is a lot of people's favorite. I'm pretty sure it's the last book that he's published before the newest one. This book is about a girl named Maggie, who is a house flipper. And when she was five, her and her parents bought this like big mansion and went and lived in it. And one day they just fled and never went back. And then her dad wrote this story about their haunted house and what kind of took place in this house. So Maggie's dad dies and he never sold said house. So Maggie inherits it and reluctantly goes to flip the house, to sell it, against her mom's wishes. While she's there, she uncovers a lot of secrets and comes to a lot of realizations about the whole situation and her dad's book. And it's really good. And there's kind of like a good plot twist at the end, but besides the, the book chapters, I really don't have any complaints. I gave it four stars, not because the story was bad, but because the writing style, I guess. So I love me a good split perspective story, but this story, and props to Riley Sager for being able to pull this off, is some chapters are from like the parent's perspective or the main character's perspective, and then the other chapters are excerpts or like chapters from the dad's book and the writing of the dad is not great and I'm sure that that was on purpose because it's not the same type of writing as the rest of the book but those chapters make it so hard to get through the story because they're just not good like they give you more insight into what happened and what's going on and like clues and stuff like that I just can't handle the writing style for some reason it drives me nuts but otherwise this was a good book
And the last book that I'm going to be talking about is my romance slash smut slash sci-fi romance. Just like most people, a lot of my free time is dedicated to TikTok and I've made it to book talk and subsequently to smut talk. And for a while, this book was highly like popular and a lot of people were reading it, a lot of people were suggesting it, and I just decided to give it a chance. Like, why not? Just wanted to see what all the hype was about. So, the last book in this video is Ice Planet Barbarians, which if you've not heard of it, honestly, you're kind of missing out. But if you have heard of it, you know what I'm talking about. This book is written by Ruby Dixon and can be found for free on Kindle Unlimited. Now, if you are a very analytical type person and you go into this book with a critical eye, you're not going to like it. But if you're just thinking, smut, aliens, put them together, why not, then you're going to like it. This book follows a girl who's abducted by aliens and her and a bunch of other girls are on this spaceship and while they're flying across space to probably be like sold to some other alien race or something, their ship crashes on this ice planet, okay? And after the crash, the main character is the most uninjured and conscious person. So she takes it upon herself to leave the spaceship and go exploring and try to find help. So while she's out in nature, she comes across a lot of kind of terrifying alien creatures, and the largest of which being a barbarian war chief. So they kind of gain each other's trust and a romance begins and mind you they can't even communicate properly because they speak different languages, but it works. If you like fast paced romances, you'd like this book because there's not a whole lot of waiting, not really at all. There's like a brief enemies to lovers trope going on in there because he's a big scary barbarian and that's terrifying, but otherwise it happens really quickly. The book is only 188 pages long, so you gotta squeeze the romance into that. Though I'm ashamed to admit it, I really enjoyed this book and I will give it five stars. <laughs> to be honest, it's not the worst book I've ever read. And if you read it and you like it, guess what? There are 22 or 21 other books in this series, which you don't have to read them in order. Um, and there's even holiday specials for you to read. So don't worry. If you like alien barbarians or ice planet barbarians, whatever, there's plenty of content out there for you. Don't worry. All right, so that really concludes my wrap up for the first half of 2021. I'm glad that I've been kind of branching outside of my comfort zone when it comes to genres of books. And I really hope to continue that and not just read fantasy. But if you'd like to see more books about reading, more books about reading, more books about reading, definitely let me know. I know my channel is kind of all over the place. I have some crochet stuff and reading stuff and lifestyle stuff. I got it all. But if you like reading and you like book to let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for videos you want me to make, go ahead and leave those down there too. And thank y'all so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed. And I will see y'all next time. Bye guys.